I made a video intro in Godot. The introduction that you saw to this video was made using the Godot engine, and I'm going to go over how I accomplished that. The motivation for doing something like this in Godot versus something like After Effects is I don't have access to After Effects, nor do I have the skills to make a nice animated intro. And as I got to thinking about it, I figured, well, the Godot animation player is probably powerful enough to do a lot of the things that I'd want to do. And sure enough, it is. So here's the basic scene setup. We have my control nodes here, which are just laid out in the way that I want my introduction to generally go. So I'll just scroll ahead in the animation a little bit here. So you can see that I have a color rectangle, which is serving as the background color. We have my logo parent node, which has a logo texture rect, so that's the hooded skull right there. And then as a child of that, there's a burst rectangle, um, and this is basically just providing that um, sort of starburst effect behind it. And uh, both of those are animated, so as I scrub through, you can see the logo just sort of pops in. And this is just using the normal stuff that you'd use in an animation player, you know, modifying the rect scale, modifying the rotations. So the burst behind the logo rotates and the logo like squashes and stretches or bounces in essentially. And then I have a rich text label here which says Firebelly Games. Now this is the interesting one here. So I wanted to use the BB code effects to do a wave for this text. So if I change the amplitude to 50, you can see that it's doing a wave right now. What I wanted to do is I wanted to make that amplitude go from 50 to 0, so I get a damping effect on the text. And you can kind of see that, so if I go 50 to 40, then 30, whoops, then 30, then 20, then 10, then 0, that's kind of where I wanted it to end up. However, the major problem with this is that the amplitude is not a standalone property that I can just plug into the animation player and animate like everything else. And furthermore, the text, every time you change the BB code text value, the animation for the wave resets. So even if I was able to smoothly update the text every frame, um, what would happen is that uh, the text would just end up jittering a lot. So in order to solve that, what I've done is I've created a tween node that I can use in my script. And what I'm doing in my script is I'm saying, okay, I want my max amplitude to be 100. And then here's the BB code text that I want to use for the rich text label. Now you can see I have this amplitude in bracket zero. That's so I can do a string replace on it, essentially. So if I scroll down here, I call start, by the way, from the animation player in here. And that basically tells it to start the text effect. And what that's going to give me is the following. So I'm just going to go ahead and play this really quick. So that's going to give me that little wave that dampens out to zero right there. So it's on start call, it's calling create labels. And this is essentially just duplicating this rich text label that I have right here. It's duplicating it a hundred times and adding all of those nodes to the scene tree. And each time it duplicates a node, it's modifying the BB text value to have an amplitude that is one less than the previous one. So what I end up with is if I play this again, uh, I'm going to go ahead and press space. If I go to my remote scene tree, you can see that I have all of these labels here. And if I look at the first label, you'll see that the amplitude is set at 100. And if I go all the way down to the last one, the amplitude is zero. So then what I'm doing is I'm also starting that tween that I mentioned earlier. So the tween that is right here, this title tween. Uh, I'm basically using it to tween the value of this, which is the visible title index, from zero to the last child index. And what that's essentially doing is that's just telling me, hey, which child index should be visible at this point in time. Then in the physics process, what I'm doing is I'm just hiding all of the children and then targeting the one that I want to show um, Whose val so that value is coming from the, the tween that I just described down here. And that's being set to visible. So what that gives me is that gives me a very nice um, amplitude grade from 100 to 0, uh, which is the effect that I wanted to achieve. Okay, now let's get into the actual video saving. So I have this video recorder node here, and its job is to record the video. So I have a couple of export properties here. 
It asks for an animation player, an output directory, which I will show you later, and also an output size. And this is the size that the final video or final images are gonna be scaled to. Okay, so if I go into the video recorder script, here's what's happening. So every physics process frame, which by the way, I have set to 30 frames per second, because that's how much, how many frames per second I want my video to be. So every frame, what it's doing is it's grabbing the viewport texture data and adding that to an array of frames, technically a list in C sharp. And then when the animation finishes, what it's doing is it's iterating over all those frames. It's actually spinning off a new thread for each frame. So the, it's calling save image here. And this is doing three things. It's flipping the image because it comes in upside down off the viewport. It's resizing it using the nearest interpolation method to my output size. So I'm actually recording these images, saving these images. Uh, at 1280 by 720 and then doubling both the width and the height to get to 2560 by 1440 which is 1440p and then what I'm doing is I'm just saving it um, into a PNG file using the built-in image save PNG and this is just saying that it needs to have five digits in it and it's using the index that I'm passing in down here so what that gives me is that gives me an intro folder right here with all of these images, which are all the frames that occurred during the animation. So if I click on one of these, you can see like this is one of the small ones or one of the first ones where the logo is small and bouncing in. And then here's one of the middle ones without text. If I scroll down even more, um, here's some text with the transparent background. Now the transparent background was important because I wanted to be able to overlay that on top of another clip of video just for kind of like a different sort of transition. And the way that I'm accomplishing that is I'm just essentially saying, okay, get tree, get the tree root and set transparent background to true. And then what I'm doing is notice the color rectangle. So this is why I'm using a color rectangle for the background color is because during the course of this animation, that color rectangle actually fades out to transparent. And so since there's no nothing else there, no colors to render, uh, when I grab that data off the viewport, all of that comes back as transparent pixels. Okay, so we have our images here. Now what I'm doing is I have a PowerShell script that essentially uses the FFmpeg tool to convert that into an MOV. Now the reason that I'm using MOV is because I believe it's lossless. Um, I might be wrong on that, but I know for sure that it supports alpha channels, which is um, really important. So this script essentially just takes all of those PNG images and stitches them together in a 30 FPS video file. And then if I go to my editor resolve over here, um, I have it set up for basically how I'd set up a video. So on the top here is the intro that I would place on the video. And then the second clip that's on the bottom here um, would be the clip that goes into the actual content of the video. And you can see as I scrub through this, because of the alpha channel, we can actually see the second video coming in underneath uh, the first one. And that's exactly what I wanted to do. So you can imagine like for this video in particular, um, this clip would be the Godot editor, right? My, my screen cap of the Godot editor. And that's basically it. That's how I created a video intro in Godot. I also did the same thing pretty much exactly for the outro, which you are about to see right now. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, be sure to like and subscribe. You can also follow me on Twitter at Firebelly. Wishlist my game Swordslinger on Steam. A link to that is in the description.